Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. This tutorial should serve as a basic introduction to selection structures and more specifically the if, else, and end if structure. And I'm going to do this today to, um, to show you about the selection structure uh, through the use and design of a simple calculator program. So I'm starting off with the four essential divisions, identification, environment, data, and procedure, and I've assigned my program an ID of calculator. Something I haven't shown you yet in the tutorials is what's called a flower box. And a flower box is nothing more than several comments grouped together that allow the programmer to provide a brief description about what the program actually does. So right here I'll just say this is a simple calculator program and normally you will put the date so I'm just going to put this one a generic user ID and then reason for uh, the actual comment. So the program design. Let's compile this, make sure we don't have any errors, no errors yet. Now a lot of the students have trouble remembering that we normally start off in column 8 but in order to make a line in a COBOL program a comment is that we have to go over to the left one with a cursor so in column 7 rather than 8 we start that line with an asterisk and anything to the right of that asterisk is considered a comment by the COBOL program and is not compiled. Now, let's look at the procedure division. Go ahead and indent. Remember, indention is a very good part of programming etiquette. Helps everything look nice and neat. So, I am going to just write some display statements that will eventually become the welcome and instruction screen to the calculator program. Now, if we want the end user to add, to tell us, or the program to add two numbers together, let's tell them to enter one below. To subtract two numbers, please enter two. To multiply, please enter a three. And finally, because this is a very simple calculator program, to divide two numbers, please enter the number four. Now, what's going to be shown at this point to the end user is all of this information inside the display statements. Let me go ahead and compile it, make sure I don't have any errors. Okay. All right. So now moving forward, that's just the instructions that we've created to display in the output screen for the end user to interact with this program. We now need to use the accept statement in order to programmatically retrieve the number that they enter. Now assuming that they only enter a 1, 2, 3, or 4. This has nothing to do with error, val error checking right now and data, val data validation, which we will do later in another tutorial. But let's say that we want to call this variable user option. So we want to accept whatever their option is that they enter. So I have stated that I want to use a variable down here in the procedure division so I need to declare it up here in the data division let's just say simple pick 9 value 0 okay so we're going to accept it now assuming they enter a 1, 2, 3, or 4 regardless they have to enter two numbers in order to use the program so we need another display statement asking them please enter your 
first number copy paste please enter your second number once I ask them to enter their first number I want to accept an, a variable and store it in user num1 likewise after this one we'll say user num2 I, if I try to use it down here it needs to be declared up here in the proceed excuse me in the data division so I have user num1 pick let's assume 95 and I'll keep track of two decimal places hence the V right here implied decimal I want to do the same thing for user num2 let's go ahead and compile that All right, no errors now at this point in the procedure division we welcome them we told them how to interact with the program we've retrieved that entry and stored it in user option now we're displaying enter user number your first number and second number we're accepting that those numbers and storing them in user number one and number two respectively now comes the point for the selection structure or the if structure specifically we need a way to evaluate their option whatever they entered right here because there are four different options a so one two three or four that we're going to do uh, different things with uh, depending on that option so now we have the if user option if it equals one we know that they want to add two numbers together so those two numbers again are stored in user num1 user num2 and so they're going to be added now I've created a variable right here called result so user num1 user num2 those added together are going to be stored in result I need to come up here to the data division define result declare result rather let's make that bigger still keeping track of at least two decimal places now while all COBOL compilers do not make it a necessity for their programmers to end an if structure in an end if uh, I see that it helps a lot of the students and, and for, for me as well uh, determine where the if structure actually ends well if the user didn't enter one they must have entered something else so now we need to evaluate the other options see if user options two well if they did enter two what are they telling us right here say and subtract two numbers please enter two so they want to subtract so I'm going to take this compute statement copy it here and the only thing that's going to change is the subtraction if it's not user number if it's not user option one and not user option two well let's see if user option equals three and if it is we want to compute result multiply else they want to divide two numbers together now I should mention a few things here make sure that every if has a closing associated end if with it right here we have actually three if structures but there are two inside of, a, of another one so this is what you call or refer to as a nested if structure each end if and each else is lined up with its associated beginning if if else end if if else end if if else end if so logically this is what the structure is doing if user option is one equal to one if the value of one is stored in user option if that is true then the COBOL program will go to this compute statement immediately below it execute this line of code store the the summation of number one num two in result and fall completely out at its end if so if user option equals one meaning they want to add will compute result with the addition and fall completely out at this end if meaning that it the co computer does not even look at the remaining structure inside that if 
but assume the end user enters a 3 meaning they want to multiply well we start off with this first if structure is user option equal to 1 no that is false so we go to the else there's a new if statement is user option equal to no that is false so we go to this else statement is user option 3 yes they do want to multiply so then we execute this line of code immediately below it store the result store the the result resulting value into result fall out at its end diff and then you fall out these remaining end diffs in a cascade like manner so let me compile this and something also you should notice the only period at the end of any of these statements lies at the very last end if. If you put a period here I will get an error or more than one actually saying it can't get to the, the closing end if statements. So recompile the only period in entire in excuse me if structure is at the very last end if. So we've written the code right now to give the program user directions accept that option that they enter how they want to interact with the calculator except number one number two change our compute statement our mathematical operand depending on their option one is addition two is subtraction three is multiplication and four is division now I did not need to have an if user option equals four assuming that the user only enters a one two three or four if it's not one and not two and not three well then it must be four so it's going to fall into this else right here so that's the reason we don't need a new if structure for uh, assess user option equals four now what we need to do is display the result back out to them so let me display a blank line and then result and put a stop run to stop the program so let me compile that let me actually run it so here are the directions let's say when I add two numbers together uh, so let's say 5 and 7 result is 12 now we can easily see there are many leading zeros right here in our answer so we with that as well as not being able to determine where decimal places are or whether that's a negative or positive response what we need to do is change our pit clauses in the data division so now we need to add our S's and we will need to actually create a numeric edited field to move result into to format it in a different manner so it looks more structured, looks prettier actually, um, to the end user in the output. So the Z's take care of the leading zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, an actual decimal place. I want to separate every third number with a comma, and now after the calculations I want to move result to any result and display out any result. Let me recompile. Let's do this. Use the same intermediate and let's go ahead and say multiply. Let's give it some decimals to work with. Let's give it a negative number to work with and there's our result. Ah, I see a simple error I missed. In the numeric edited field, I did not include uh, a negative sign in the pit clause. So let me go and change that to the right hand side. Rerun it. Give it some more decimals. Give it another negative number. And now we do see the result being negative. All right. Well, that's it for the simple and brief explanation uh, about selection and if structures and more to come in the future. Thanks for checking in.